Welcome and greetings, career-minded superstars. You are listening to the exclusive Career Coach, your podcast for all things career. And I'm Lisa Edwards, the indispensable career coach for superstars just like you. Now let's dig into this week's topic, shall we? Go from dragging yourself to work each day to finding a job you love. The Career Spring program is for high achieving and ambitious mid level professionals like you who are looking for a job that uses your zone of genius, recognizes your value, and pays you what you're worth. If you're ready to learn more, schedule a complimentary consult using the link to my calendar in the show notes. Be sure to follow me on Exclusive Career Coaching on Facebook. Lisa Edwards on LinkedIn and Lisa.Edwards on Instagram. Greetings. How you doing today? Hey, I want some love because it's Florida and it's August and I'm in my hot, hot podcast closet. Slave it away for you guys. And there is a lot of sweat happening. So I hope it's, I hope you find it worth it. Today, we're going to talk about prepping for the final hiring press, a push of the year. Typically, what happens in you know pre-COVID is the biggest hiring push of the year occurs mid-January through mid-March, and then the second biggest hiring push of the year occur- occurs after Labor Day until early to mid-November. Now, COVID, we don't know. It's it's been crazy, right? We had a job seekers market at the beginning of the year, and now it's moved towards more towards an employer market. So all of that has affected the hiring processes, but let's let's go with there being one more major chance for you to get hired in 2022. And I want to break this down into if you've already been searching and you are going to continue through the end of the year, and then for those of you that are just going to get started. Now, these are going to be things that I've talked about in other podcasts. I'm repackaging them here for you. I think reminders are, are always a good thing. So if you've been looking for a few months with no results, unsatisfactory results, it's really time to up your game. And especially if all you've been doing is looking at job boards. I have said on this podcast, I say it to clients, if all you're doing is looking at job boards, then you're looking at job boards. You're not conducting a job search. You're looking at job boards. So it's time to add a couple of active job search strategies to your arsenal. And I'm going to talk about those in a few minutes. So one to two, not asking you to completely upset the apple cart, nor am I suggesting that you stop applying online. I'm, we're adding some things. And the other thing I want to think about here is how is your mind set? So you haven't had the success that you were hoping for at the outset. It hasn't gone the way you'd hoped it was. What are you making that mean? It's so important to keep good mental hygiene throughout your job search so that you can get those different results. Because if you're hung up on, you know, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with the job market? What's wrong with employers? You're not going to have the success that you want. Now, if you are just getting started, of course, you need to have an updated resume and a LinkedIn profile. So if you haven't done that, get on it immediately. Call me. Call you know, a resume writer that you've worked with before, I highly, and I will always highly recommend the use of a professional, just like I wouldn't dare go into, you know, the the electric box in the garage at my house and decide that I knew how to rewire the home or, you know, how do I replumb the house? I wouldn't do those things, nor I doubt would you, unless you happen to be an electrician or a plumber. So you call immediately, you call professionals for that. This is no different. And I would argue that the stakes are actually much higher when you think about the start, A, the starting salary that you hope to get, and B, the speed with which you hope to get the results. So again, get those documents updated. And also, it's time to give some thought to your non-negotiables in both an employer and a job. Get a piece of paper out and write down what you must have. Now, these are different from the G wouldn't it be nices? And you're welcome to have a column of G wouldn't it be nices. So an example that I've used for many years is when I left Georgia and, and moved into the university role in Missouri, one of my G wouldn't it be nices was windows in my office because I we had been in what was literally the bomb shelter for the university at Columbus State. And I there was no window in our entire office. It was a cinder block building. And so I had many a time gone out into the hallway and looked out the the doors were right there the pair of double glass doors so i could see outdoors if i left our suite and it could be horrible weather outside and we wouldn't even know it 
So that was a G, wouldn't it be nice? Now, if I had some sort of health issue where I had to have fresh air recirculating, maybe that would be a non-negotiable for me. So write those things down. And the reason that this is important is, number one, how are you going to know you found your ideal employer if you haven't identified what that looks like for you? And number two, it helps you to avoid what I call shiny object syndrome, right? And I think I've used this example before, but when I was buying a house back in 2014, my then husband and I had narrowed it down to two houses. And one of the houses had a whole lot of shiny objects, but it didn't have some of the basics that I needed that were really important to me, like a fenced in backyard and washer and dryer inside the house. And so the fact that it had a really cute wine cooler and it had these really cool lights in the bedroom and the bathroom, those were shiny objects. And because I had created a spreadsheet to write down what my non-negotiables were in a home and had evaluated both houses the other house, the house with the things that I had required, scored much higher. And it was very obvious to me which choice we should make. And one more suggestion, it's time to do a Google search on yourself. Is there anything there that would cause a potential employer to skip over you? Now, that's been advice for a long time. I think what is less talked about is, is there any positive comments out there? Is there a positive content? Have you contributed to your profession? Now, if you haven't, it's really kind of late to start that, but I think it's it's a word to the wise for you going forward that if you want to be considered a thought leader and a leader in your field in general, and you want to move up to higher levels, having that body of work out there and being considered the expert, the subject matter expert that you are is so important. All right, so whether you've been looking for a job for a, a while or you're just getting started, I want to give you some job search activities that you can consider adding to your passive, you know, looking at the job boards or the company websites. I want you to pick one or two of these. Don't try to do them all, but see what makes the most sense for you. So here are some options. Number one, begin or increase connecting and cultivating relationships on LinkedIn. So this is not looking at jobs and applying to jobs on LinkedIn. This is who in my field do I need to know? Who do I need to connect with? Who are they connected with? How can I get my foot in the door at XYZ Company? Next one, set up one or two one-on-one networking meetings weekly, either via technology or in person. So this is really going to depend on what does your work schedule look like? Are you employed or unemployed? How, How quickly do you want a job? at least one one-on-one networking meeting. So I and I've talked about how to do that in other podcasts. So I'm not going to go into huge detail on how to structure those, what to do before, during and after. You can find those episodes in my in my back catalog. Next, attend a virtual or in-person event for your professional association. So if you belong to the Society for Human Resource Management, SHRM, go to a meeting, participate, get involved. That's a great way to network with other HR people and they know where the jobs are. So same thing with the marketing association or whatever it is, whatever field you're in. Next, check out virtual or live career fairs in your area. These can be sponsored by your city. They could be sponsored by a local university. They could be sponsored by the university that you went to. It could be sponsored by an industry. Healthcare is one or IT often has these kinds of things you know, areas that education where they have a huge need, or it could be an individual employer. I saw one today. I don't know when it's being held, but it was, I saw it in social media today. It was a government employee fair. So the state government for Florida was hosting a career fair here in Tallahassee. Next, attend in-person networking event. So it, it could be the Chamber of Commerce. It could be BNI, which is Business Networking International. It could be any kind of in-person networking event. So networking may be in the name of the event, or if not, it's clearly networking is a primary purpose of the event. The other kind of event that you could attend would be events where networking can occur. I, I tend to find that the people I talk to tend to define networking far too narrowly they're coming at it with with blinders on, very myopic view. If the music isn't too loud and the people aren't too drunk, you can network. You can network at a wine tasting event. You could network at, like we have here in Tallahassee, I'm a huge fan of Publix. 
And they have these aprons cooking schools and they have them in certain designated locations. We have one here in Tallahassee. I'm going to one, no, tomorrow as I speak, as I'm recording this. And that is a cross section of people, right? And they put me at, they'll put me and my friend at a table with people we don't know and we can network there. I have networked sitting in, you know, coffee shop, waiting in line for something at the, I don't know, post office or somewhere. So if the people aren't too drunk and the music isn't too loud, you can network. Also, check out Meetup and the Events tab on Facebook for affinity groups that you could join. So if you don't know what Meetup is, you, every city of any size, and probably don't even have to be that big, you have a Meetup. And you just click on Meetup.com. And you put in your location, and it's going to tell you all the affinity groups. It could be everything from religious-based to fitness based, to foodies, to people who like a certain kind of karate and those kind of things. It can be anything like that. So those are people who all have jobs, who have family with jobs, who have spouses with jobs, all of that. The events tab on Facebook is also a great place. You know, who's performing some music maybe over at a dinner venue or there's going to be some kind of a craft fair or something like that. You never know where you can network. Next, look into your university alumni association. So I was working with a client just yesterday and we included that in his job search strategy. He is going to a very technical school and he is wanting to get into a very technical field. So I encouraged him to check in with the alumni association and see what they offer. And then finally, let people at your place of worship know that you're looking for a job. Typically, those are people who really want to help. They're very, you know, kind of inherent. They, they hopefully are very nice people. And they, again, they all have jobs and they own businesses and they know people and they have connections and all of that. So let it be known within your, your place of worship family that you're looking for a job as well. So again, add one or two of these. I'm going to go over them again in case you're driving, but also don't forget you can grab the show notes when you're not driving and get this list. So. Set up one or two one-to-one networking meetings. Begin cultivating relationships on LinkedIn. Check out virtual or live career fairs. Attend a virtual or in-person networking event from your professional association. Attend in-person networking events such as the Chamber of Commerce. Attend in-person events where you can network. Networking is a possibility. Check out Meetup and the Events tab on Facebook for affinity groups you might could join. Look into your university alumni association and let people at your place of worship know that you are looking for a job. So I hope this helps. Happy job searching and I'll see you next week. Take care. You've been listening to the Exclusive Career Coach with Lisa Edwards, CEO of Exclusive Career Coaching. It would be great if you would rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. Also, I want to be your career coach. So be sure to ask questions about your career management challenges and job search situation. Until next time.